and welcome to Mentor Talks. My name is Asha Bay, and I am joining you from a special location today. We'll be talking about where it is in a moment. But right now, I'd like to introduce our guest, the diplomat of dance, Dana Taisu Burgess, who is also a two-time Fulbright Exchange alumni and has served as a cultural ambassador and cultural envoy for the U.S. Department of State. Welcome, Dana. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. You're welcome. So, Dana, um, you're you're known as you're known worldwide as diplomatic dance, um, and you've been you've acted as a cultural ambassador for the U.S. Department of State for like thirty years. Almost thirty years. Wow. Yeah, since nineteen ninety three, I believe. Wow. So tell us more about it. Um, you know, it's been such a wonderful experience to be able to explore the world and share creative processes with artists from all over the world in order to build friendships. And, you know, I think at the core of diplomacy is friendship building. And that's really what the arts can do on the ground. Yes, it's true. Yes. And I, I also wanted to ask you about your Fulbright experiences. You, you've done two already. Yes. Uh, where were those and when did you do that? They were both in Lima, Peru. And um, I decided to do the Fulbrights at the San Marcos University University of San Marcos, which is the oldest university in the Americas, and they have a wonderful modern dance company there, which is in residence, so I worked with them on two different occasions to choreograph work and to also um, teach and just have um, an exchange of ideas in general, so that was really um, great, and I enjoyed the first full race so much that I had to go again, so. <laughs> That's great, yes. Um, and speaking of exchange of ideas, you were also with us at the Alumni Thematic International Exchange Seminar on American Identity in Minneapolis, Minnesota recently. Yes, um, that was wonderful. Yes, yes. What was, what was that experience like? Um, I think what is so important about those moments of bringing together people in a conference situation is that um, there is an exchange of ideas and thought processes from all over the country, but also like all over the world, right? Because so many people have engaged in projects, not just in America, but abroad as well. So people are coming together from very different parts of um, not just America, but also different fields of interaction. So some people's specialty um, might be urban development, some people's specialty might be the arts, might be music, might be dance. And so there is this um, natural coupling of, I, of individuals and ideas that bring together new projects. And I think that that's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I have to ask you, what does American identity mean to you? Mm. You know, American identity to me is really an ever-changing terrain, right? Because if we think of what American identity was 50 years ago or 100 years ago um, or 150 years ago, you know, it's always changing. So um, American identity for me is extremely diverse. And what I really focus on in my work is the exploration of diverse stories within the um, really American tapestry and how can I illuminate different parts of the canon of American history that haven't been thought about or spoken about or danced about before. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so speaking of dance, uh, we are we are at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. Yes, so the, the big reveal. Um, uh, do you want to tell us more about why we're here and what you have upcoming? Absolutely. Well, um, this is where I'm based as the choreographer in residence for the Smithsonian. And we have some new performances coming up on May 17, 18, and 19, which we're really excited about, which will be here in the museum's main courtyard. And the, the work is called El Muro, um, slash The Wall, which in Spanish, El Muro means the wall. And I'm really focusing the work on looking at asylum seekers and refugees at the southern U.S. border. 
And one of the big inspirations for this work was actually the painting, which is behind us here, by Rigoberto Gonzalez. Wow, yes, yes, this is an amazing painting. Refugees crossing the border wall into South Texas. Yes. I was really attracted to this painting because, you know, um, Mr. Gonzalez's work is has this Baroque reference to it, right, in style. And, you know, you can see that there's a biblical reference to spiritual reference, and that somehow in this really, um, you know, emotional, dangerous moment of crossing, of fear, he somehow is bringing this spiritual sanctity to the situation. And that really fascinating. Yes, I can see that the cross and the baby. Right. Uh, almost like she's Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So you also have a dance company. Yes, and this is our 30th anniversary season this year, so it's very exciting. It's been three decades. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and so Dana, I, we, I, you know, we've met before. So we were talking about where you grew up and, um, and you know, you came to DC and what that was like. And just wondering if you could tell us more about that. I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I'm actually Korean American. I grew up in a Latino neighborhood and went to bilingual public schools, which were taught in Spanish and English. And um, Santa Fe wasn't the sort of glamorous concept of Santa Fe that we think of now because um, Ralph Lauren, quote unquote, hadn't been there yet, right? So it was really much more of an artist community, a small southwestern city with a very interesting history. And that's where I grew up. And interestingly enough, I started thinking about what is this a universal language that could connect all these different cultures that I grew up with because I had um, friends who were indigenous in background. I had friends who were, um, you know, Spanish in background, Hispanic in background, and I had Caucasian friends as well, and Asian friends, Asian American friends. So I started realizing that movement was this common language, right? That everybody understood when a person is elated through their movement or they understand when somebody's sad in their movement. And then that was this one communicator that all those cultures had in common. So that's really where it all started for me. Wow. Yeah. wow. And so it was dance that brought you to DC? It was dance that brought me to DC. And interestingly enough, when I was, I guess, 20 years old, one of the places that I used to come often to was the National Portrait Gallery, where we wow. are today. <laughs> And it was, it was so important to me because it's a free museum. It was a place where I could um, find the solace and friendship in a way with artwork, you know, being away from home for the first time. Nice. And um, so it's always stayed very important to me and, and in my heart. So it's so wonderful to be based here because it very much feels like home to be surrounded by, by visual arts. And the other thing is that my parents were both visual artists. And so I just have always grown up around visual art and placing dance within a uh, visual arts community just seems to make sense to me. You know? Yes, yes, I can see that. It's very familiar. Yes, exactly, uh -huh. yes. And so, yeah, what would, what would your advice, I, I, I would imagine dance though is, is not an easy field to you know, make it in, and right. yet here you are, you, you're the Smithsonian you know, institution's first ever dance, um, choreographer in residence, um, you have your own dance company, you're a cultural envoy for the U.S. Department of State in dance, and, and you know as a diplomat of dance. So what's your advice to young people who are starting out and trying to make their, make their way in the world as an artist or as a dancer? Mm -hmm. I would really say to a young person to figure out what is unique about themselves, right? Like about themselves. So um, it's about individual identity and how that is moved into and infused into choreography that I think makes good choreography, right? And so 
if you think about it, there aren't any choreographers that are memorable who have copied other choreographers. Rather, it is the uniqueness of a choreographer's work that makes us think about them, that makes their work um, last in, in the field. So I think as soon as possible for a young person, explore where, where they are from, explore what is unique about themselves, and then go with that. And don't be a follower, just be a unique leader. Yes, that actually sounds like great advice for any field. Oh, good. Right? <laughs> So Dana, I also wanted to ask you, um, there's been a resurgence in anti-Asian American violence in the past two years, and I'm just wondering if there, what you, what you think about that and how you might be, what you might be doing to um, tackle it. Right. Um, you know, I, my family immigrated to um, Hawaii to begin with as indentured workers for the pineapple and sugarcane plantations in Hawaii in 1903. And that is where my great grandparents worked, my grandparents and even my mother worked on the plantations and grew up on the plantations. So when this resurgence of anti-Asian violence occurred, because it's really always been within the history of America, unfortunately, and different countries all over the world. Um, you know, I had a conversation with my mother, and she said, oh my gosh, how many generations do we have to be here before we're considered Americans? And that really was so um, impactful to have this conversation with her, because she was so frustrated, and she's 92, and she's just she was so upset about it. And so I started a podcast called slampodcast.com, which interviews thought leaders and artists about their views and perspectives and shows how diverse the Asian American community is really just to help um, everyone understand what are the different journeys that we've all had and also how those individual journeys create the artists that we are and our aesthetics and our perspective. Yes. I, yes. I was just thinking about that with, um, like, you were saying the different types of Asian Americans. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, I'm Asian American, and you're Asian American, right. but we come from, um, our origins are from very different countries. Mm -hmm. um, like, my parents are from India, and your, right. your ancestors are from Korea. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also Asians who are from the Philippines, or Japan, sure. or China. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many different um, countries there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting that they all fall under the Asian American category. This large category that um, is so diverse and I think struggles with trying to know when to group together in solidarity to move political platforms at times and um, you know, other um, platforms of freedom forward and yet still maintain that individuality and all the richness that each of those cultures brings to America. Because I think one of the main reasons that America continues to be um, a major world thought leader is because there is this constant um, regeneration of information and thought and innovation because of our new American communities and also just the diverse backgrounds that we all bring to the dialogue here. Exactly. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I mean that yeah, that is one of the things that makes America the leading country. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, so I, I think with that, wow, I think we've covered a lot of a lot of ground here. Yes. Um, but I'm so excited that your the upcoming dance work of Merle is coming up. And um, yeah, I also want to ask you what was sorry, one last question I realized. Uh you were, you're writing a book, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have a new memoir. It's already um, in pre-sales now. Uh, you know, order on Barnes and Noble and um, Amazon, and you know, it's from being published by University of New Mexico Press, and it's called Chino and the Dance of the Butterfly, and it's all about how I grew up in Santa Fe and 
and then it moves into um, how it became a dancer to a choreographer to living in Washington to touring. There's a lot about touring around the world okay. and um, ending up here at the Smithsonian. It's actually sort of, it's, it's fun, it's adventurous. It probably sounds like an expanded version of our conversation today. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, well, thank you so much for being with us, and thank you for sharing your time and your stories. I would really appreciate it. And we hope you, our viewers, also got a lot out of this, um, out of this Mentor Talks, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Um, and for if you want to tune in, you can always check out our, our, the rest of our videos for Mentor Talks on our Facebook channel. Um, also, we are on Twitter at Change Alumni, and we're on Instagram, where we sometimes do Mentor Talks there. And we, of course, are, um, and then we're also on LinkedIn, um, where we have a growing community of Exchange Alumni, actually. Yes, almost 7,000 followers. Wow. So we're, just, we're, we're doing well. Um, but anyway, that, that, I think that, that's it for the show today. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Dana. <laughs>